Bob Bakian is out and about, and Bob, you wanted to report on the death of Richard Butler, the Aryan Nations founder, is that correct? Uh, that is correct, Phil. Uh, I had some thoughts because I had covered Richard Butler and Aryan Nations uh, early on in the 80s when he got the Aryan Nations compound going. What do you, uh, uh, this man's philosophy was so morally bankrupt, uh, a leader of a white supremacist skinhead group. What what struck you most about this man? Well, I, I have to tell you, Phil, that he was a man of moral corruption. His philosophy was bankrupt. His entire uh, political outlook was completely unrealistic, and it was certainly something to behold because the man himself was quite intelligent. And uh, uh, the other thing about Richard Butler is as profoundly uh, morally corrupt as he was and as uh, utterly politically and historically ignorant as he was, uh, he made a Cornish game ham with wild rice that was absolutely superb. And I remember sitting many an evening with him, and it was an, it, I would have to sit through all of his tirades about the mongrel mud races and the corruption of the international Jewish banking tyranny, uh, but it was worth it for the Cornish game ham, the wild rice, and the mashed potatoes. It was just something he did. I think there was a butter mixture, and there was... All right, let me, let me get this straight. Richard Butler, the head of Aryan Nations, made a hell of a Cornish game hen. Can you believe it? So I would sit there and he would rant and rave about how he wanted to cut off the head of every Jewish person and how he thought all black people were descended from the devil and how he thought that Catholics were a bunch of papist scum and he would uh, show me the shrunken heads of Vietnamese that he got on the internet and uh, one time he showed me the skull of a Japanese soldier that he bought off of eBay. But by God, could this guy make a salsa? And I can tell you... You're kidding me, man. <laughs> You'd sit around and listen to this? Yes, well, it was... I mean, was it worth it? It was, yes. It was that good? It was fantastic. Are you kidding? And not only that, what this guy could do with pork ribs... Woo! So I would sit there, and I, yeah, I remember just licking my lips and my mouth watering as he would bring out this butcher paper. And loaded down was this delicious stack of lightly seasoned, very lean pork ribs. He did a little bit of parboiling, but then he'd put them on the grill and toss them back and forth. You know how the flame kind of leaps up and a little bit of that pork fat? Oh, holy sweet God. Just fantastic. And while he was tossing the pork ribs back and forth, he would talk about how he wanted to open up new, improved concentration camps with microwave ovens for human beings to cook in, for human beings to die in. But man, could he make a blueberry cheesecake. And another thing... Get out of here. I don't want to hear any more of this crap. I don't care how good a blueberry freaking cheesecake he made. Sit there and listen to him going through that kind of swill. Did I tell you about his jambalaya? I don't want to.